the butterfly effect. The notion that the world is deeply interconnected, such that one small act can influence a much larger and complex outcome. One flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil can cause a tornado in Texas. Football is one place where one small decision can lead to some unforeseen outcomes. Blaugrana is a nickname given to Barcelona to describe their famous jersey colours. It translates to blue and deep red. These colours are famous because they are worn by some of the greatest players to have ever played the game. Cruyff, Maradona, Ronaldinho, Xavi, Iniesta, Ronaldo, Rivaldo. However, maybe none are more famous than Messi, Suarez and Neymar. MSN. Many consider this to be the greatest front three of all time. Neymar brought the flair, Suarez brought the goal scoring ability and winner's mentality, and Messi, well was Messi. Altogether they scored 363 goals in the 108 games they played together, averaging 3.36 goals per game. With their highest goal scoring season, the 2015-16 season, where they scored 131 goals between them. In context, the front three of Cristiano Ronaldo, Karen Benzema and Gareth Bale only scored 97 goals in their 2013-14 season, which was their best. 34 goals off MSN's record. However, in the summer of 2017, Neymar made the decision to leave Barcelona. He wanted to spread his wings and become the main man. No longer want to be in the shadow of Lionel Messi, bring to an end one of the greatest front threes football had ever seen. With Neymar being one of the most talented footballers on the planet, it would take a transfer fee never seen in football to complete the move. Only one club had the financial power and ambition to bring in Neymar. Paris Saint-Germain, owned by the Qatar Sports Investment Group, meaning they are state-owned by one of the richest countries in the world, thus making PSG one of the wealthiest clubs in the world. The ownership is known for making statement signings like Angel Di Maria, Edison Cavani, Thiago Silva, David Beckham and the big man Zlatan Ibrahimovic, but none as high profile as Neymar. Paris Saint-Germain completed the signing of Neymar Jr. in 2017 for a still unworldly amount of money, 222 million euros. That's 1,907 Tesla Model S's, something to think about. This left Barcelona with two things, a hole in their attack and a huge amount of cash. How would they solve these problems? The Little Magician, a nickname given to Felipe Coutinho by Liverpool fans because of his ability to dribble past players like they weren't even there. And his wand of a left foot. He was one of the best attacking midfielders in the Premier League at the time. Coutinho in his prime had one of the best free kicks in the world. Barcelona saw Coutinho as the perfect Neymar replacement. However, a special player commands a special price tag and Liverpool were not willing to lose their little magician at all. But everyone has a price. Barcelona would have to spend way over Coutinho's market value to take him off Liverpool's hands. For better or for worse, Barcelona had a lot of money from the Neymar sale and Liverpool knew it. Barcelona submitted several bids to try and persuade Liverpool to sell, with the highest being £113 million, but Liverpool did not budge. Liverpool were stubborn in their stance that Coutinho was not for sale for £142 million or 717 Ferrari 458 was Barcelona's final offer. An astronomical amount of money. Liverpool's price had been found and Barcelona had fixed their attack. Or had they? But that's a whole other video in itself. But where did that leave Liverpool? Liverpool Football Club is a club built on success and trophies. They were the dominant force throughout the 70s and 80s, dominating world football. They had won league titles and European titles, but then it stopped. Liverpool won their last league title in 1989-1990 season. The famous cop was starved of the success that it had come accustomed to, only having the odd trophy to celebrate. Great teams had come and gone, failing to win the big one, the Premier League. But then came one man, Jurgen Klopp, a jolly German whose rock and roll football had taken over European football with Borussia Dortmund. Jürgen had become Liverpool manager with only one objective, win the league title. Simple, but easier said than done. Jürgen had started to rebuild Liverpool into a team that represented him on the pitch, loud and aggressive. The sale of Coutinho was a big loss for Liverpool, but it was a much needed cash injection. Klopp noticed that although Coutinho was a great player, they didn't need to replace him. They had a young, fast, exciting 
in front three of Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino and new signing Mohamed Salah. All they needed to do was sort out their defensive problems as it was a serious weakness. Having a trio of Dejan Lovren, Ragnar Klavan and Loris Karius in charge of keeping out goals. Upgrades were seriously needed. Upgrades people, upgrades. Luckily, now they had the money to spend. First on the shopping list was a big Dutch centre half from Southampton. Virgil van Dijk. He was the pillar holding up Southampton's defence, which resulted in interest from clubs like Manchester United and Manchester City. Liverpool acquired the Dutchman for a fee that no other club was willing to match. £75 million, or in context, 490 Mercedes AMG GTs. This at the time was seen as a huge overpay, but in hindsight, was it a bargain? Second on the shopping list was the Brazilian and Roma keeper, Alisson Becker. The young Brazilian was highly rated in Italy and the fee reflected that. Liverpool almost doubled the transfer fee for a goalkeeper to 66.7 million or in context 416 Lamborghini Urises. These two transfers set Liverpool back just under £142 million, which is exactly what they sold Coutinho for. Liverpool also picked up Andy Robertson, a young Scottish fullback from relegated Hull for £10 million and had a young academy graduate by the name of Trent Alexander-Arnold coming into the team. In the 2018-19 Champions League season, Liverpool were drawn into the same group as Paris Saint-Germain. Neymar was about to come up against the team that his transfer had benefited so greatly. The first game of the Champions League season the two heavyweights fought it out. Liverpool took an early lead of two goals from Daniel Sturridge and James Milner, but PSG came back to reply with two goals from Thomas Munier and Kylian Mbappe. The game looked like it would end in a draw, but Roberto Firmino came on to win it in added time. A sign of things to come or just a lucky win? The next time the two teams met was in match day five. PSG were not going to let Liverpool do the double over them, especially at their home ground. The game started off with two first half goals from PSG, leaving Liverpool stunned. Liverpool could only get one goal back from a penalty as PSG frustrated them all game. PSG went on to win the game. Both teams made it out of the group though, with PSG on top and Liverpool second. PSG then got knocked out in the round of 16 by Manchester United, whereas Liverpool made it all the way to the semi-finals where they came up against the Blaugrana, Barcelona. Coutinho against his former club, the first leg was at the new Camp, where Suarez scored one and Messi scored two, putting Barcelona 3-0 up and looking to be doing just fine without Neymar. Liverpool failed to score, leaving them in a 3-0 deficit to overcome when they returned to Anfield. An impossible task, leaving their Champions League hopes basically over. But no, the goal started flooding in. One, two, three, four. They did it. Messi left stunned, one of the greatest comebacks in the Champions League history, sending Barcelona and Coutinho out of the Champions League and Liverpool to the final. Liverpool went on to beat Tottenham Hotspurs 2-0, winning Jurgen Klopp his first trophy as Liverpool manager. Next on the list was the big one, the Premier League. The season after the Champions League win, Liverpool would go on to dominate the league. They set a number of top flight records, including the most consecutive home wins of 24 and the biggest points league at any given point in time, 25 points. They equaled two records of the most wins in a season of 32 and the most home wins of 18. On the 25th of June, 2020, Liverpool were crowned champions of England again, exactly 30 years after their last win. They won it with seven games remaining, which is the earliest a team has ever won it. Was this all inevitable or did one player with ambitions of being the best in the world cause a 30-year drought to be ended? One flap of a butterfly's wings in Barcelona resulted in a tornado in Liverpool.